let's do a roundup of all of our series tests. So first, let's just go through the list by name. We have 11 of them, and we'll try to do an example for each one. So start, whenever someone hands you a series, you always run it through the limit test for divergence. Then we had geometric series test. So that's business of being able to identify a series as geometric on site. We had telescoping series. We had the integral test. From the integral test follows the P series test. We had the direct comparison test, the limit comparison test, the alternating series test, the absolute convergence test, the ratio test, and the root test. So what we'll do is, I'm just gonna throw out about 12 series and we're gonna go through each one and see how they match up to things on my list here. And then we'll decide whether the series is convergent or divergent. For our first series, let's consider sum n going from one to infinity, n plus one squared, two to the n, n factorial. So this is gonna be the ratio test. What are the giveaways? Well, whenever I see an n factorial, that pretty much guarantees we have a ratio test problem. The other one would be, we have a two to the n, which might indicate a geometric series, but note, there's a lot of other terms getting in the way of it being a pure geometric series. So we do the ratio test. What are we gonna do? We're gonna take the n plus first term of the sequence, put it over the nth term of the sequence, absolute value, and then we're gonna take the limit as n goes off to infinity. So we just write everything down, follow our nose. So if I take the n plus first term, that's just taking wherever I have an n, put an n plus one. So that's gonna turn this term into an n plus two, and then the bottom we're looking at n plus one factorial. Okay, and then two to the n plus one. For a sub n the bottom, that just means take your term as written and flip it over. So that's gonna be n factorial over n plus one squared times two to the n. What do we do now? Now I start canceling. That's what makes the ratio test so great. So let's take a look. I'm gonna have n plus two squared over n plus one squared. So I'm just gonna put everything on the inside here and leave the square on the outside. I have two to the n plus one and a two to the n. So the rule for exponents over common base is just to subtract the one in the bottom. So it's just gonna give me a two to the one or just plain old two. And then I'm gonna have n factorial over n plus one factorial. Well remember, n factorial is the product of all numbers from one to n. n plus one factorial is gonna be the product of all numbers from one to n plus one. So all the terms in my n factorial are gonna cancel out in pairs with the terms in the bottom. The only thing that'll survive is an n plus one because there's no n plus one term in my n factorial. So in summary, what are we looking at? Limit n plus two over n plus one squared times two over n plus one. Now, we take the limit in each piece. We notice for the first one, we'll have an n plus two over an n plus one. So that's gonna, if I divide top and bottom by n, we're looking at a one plus two to the n, two over n, one plus one over n. As the limit hits that, that's just gonna be a one over a one. So squaring that still leaves it one. For the second term, the n plus one, the bottom is gonna get large without bound, meaning this thing's gonna get driven down to zero. So our limit's gonna be zero. Ratio test says you check the limit of your ratio. If it's strictly less than one, then your series is gonna be absolutely convergent. In this case, we're only worrying about convergence. So convergent by the ratio test. Let's take a look at this series. n going from one to infinity of one over radical n times radical n plus one quantity squared. Now, there are gonna be two ways we can do this one. The way we're gonna do it to get to the answer is gonna be by the integral test, and I'll talk our way through the second one. So, why the integral test? Well, I note here, I have a composition. The inside, if I let it be radical x plus one, if I take the derivative of that, that radical x plus one, when I take the derivative, is gonna turn into one half x to the minus one half, which would put that down here if I'm thinking about having an f prime and then some f inside of the square. So talking my way through it, thinking about how substitution would work, I'm convinced I can do an integral here. So let's run through that. 
Okay, so integral test is going to say we take our integral from 1 to infinity, take this quantity, and wherever I have an n, I put an x, dx. Okay, by my little gymnastics there, I'm convinced I can do this by substitution. So u equals 1 plus radical x. Radical x is 1 half. So du is going to be equal to 1 half x to the minus 1 half dx. I push all this stuff to the other side. It's going to give me dx equals 2 radical x du. So when I put everything in, we're going to be left with 2 u to the minus 2 du. Okay, minus 2 because I want to push this u squared in the bottom to the top so we can do the integral fine. All right, we add one, flip it over, and then I'm going to substitute, and then I'll also set up the improper integral at the same time. So we'll have limit as b goes to infinity of minus 2 over 1 plus radical x as we go from 1 to b. Okay, I substitute in my limits and take their difference. That's going to give me 1 minus 2 over 1 plus radical b. And then as I take the limit as b goes through infinity, that's going to bypass the 1, and our limit's going to hit this term. Since b's gone to infinity, this thing in the bottom is going to get very large, which means the whole entire term is going to go down to 0. So I get an answer of 1. Since I've got an answer of 1, which is a finite number, okay, it's not infinite, that means our series converges. If you don't like integration, there's another way to do this one. We could take what's in the bottom, expand it, and then the lead term is going to be n to the 3 halves. Okay, the series for 1 over n to the 3 halves is a p-series with p equal to 3 halves. Since 3 halves is bigger than 1, that's going to be a convergent series. So we can use the limit comparison test with 1 over n to the 3 halves, and that'll show that this series here must converge also. So I'll do a limit comparison test problem in a little bit. I have the series sum from 1 to infinity, 1 half to the n minus 1 half to the n plus 1. So this looks like a telescoping series. So let's take a look at the partial sums. So S1 is a half minus a half squared. S2 is that term plus a half squared minus a half cubed. And we notice the inside is going to collapse out, leaving me with a half minus one half cubed. We do this in general. We'll note that we have for the nth partial sum, one half minus one half raised to the n plus one power. If I take the limit of our partial sums as n goes to infinity, this term's going to go to zero, and we're going to be left with one half. So this series definitely converges. Another way to look at this. Note that I can clean this up. So I can factor out a 1 half to the n out of each term. That's going to leave me with 1 minus 1 half on the outside. And so that's going to collapse to a half and then get reabsorbed back into our half to the nth power as 1 half n plus 1. Now if we write out the first few terms, we we'll have a half squared plus a half cubed plus a half fourth. So we could factor that out. I get my 1 there. And then that tells me that my r for the geometric series is going to be here. So I have a equal to 1 fourth, and then our r is equal to 1 half, which is strictly less than 1. So this is going to be a convergent geometric series by another test. Number 4, take the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 plus minus 1 to the n. So in this case, Let's see if we could simplify our a sub n. If n is equal to 1, we're going to get 0. If n is equal to 2, I get 2. And then we note it's just going to bounce back and forth between 0 and 2. Well, that's a problem because that means the limit of a sub n diverges. It's not going to settle on any value as we let n get large without bound. So our limit test for divergence says if your limit of your sequence is not equal to 0, then your series is going to have to diverge. So this guy, divergent series.